Hello, everyone. We would like to welcome you today to our uh, poetry evening in honor of uh, Yanis Ritsos, which uh, we mean to have as a celebration uh, throughout the community of uh, Brown and Providence uh, of the life and work of this very important Greek poet, Yanis Ritsos. Uh, this event is organized by the Hellenic Students Association and the uh, Department of Modern Greek Studies here at Brown. Uh, just to show that Greek can, uh, Greeks can also cooperate with each other, contrary to the common belief that they only know how to fight each other. Uh, and uh, we took this initiative because throughout uh, the globe, uh, the similar nights like tonight uh, are taking place in Alexandria, in Turkey, throughout the cities of Greece, uh, because, of, uh, um, because this year, one, it's 100 years from the birth uh, of Yanis Ritsos. So this is a good excuse to remember him, indulge in his lovely poems, and enjoy him. Without any further ado, uh, I give the speech to Elsa Manatidou and Marinos Purguris, who have been the, uh, the soul uh, of, of this uh, organization to give some uh, uh, to give some small reference about the life of riches thank you very much Kalispera, good evening um, and thank you for joining us tonight on a music on an evening of uh, poetry and music and I would like to thank all my friends colleagues and dear students for um, giving their time and their skill unstintingly, especially those of you who translated the poems into um, other languages. So maybe we should close the door. Um, Yanis Ritsos, born 1909, died November 11, 1990, um, cannot be summed up in five minutes. But please bear with us while we try to give you a glimpse into the life and works of a creative genius, um, a poet, dancer, professional actor, and political activist, who despite having had more than a rightful share of tragedy in his life, loss of loved ones, disease, exile, imprisonment, concentration camps, managed to remain prolific, but also engaged with a political vision throughout his life, a vision he never abandoned. Let me fill you in on some details that will define the margins of the text, the circumstances of his upbringing and social and political coordinates of his poetic output. My colleague, uh, my esteemed colleague, Marinus um, Purguris, will fill you in on some critical perspectives on the poet. Ritsos was, uh, Ritsos was the youngest of uh, four children. He was born in Monemvasia in uh, the Peloponnese. At the age of 12, his older brother, Dimitri, died of tuberculosis. Within three months, his mother also died of the same disease. And Ritos himself was afflicted, and he suffered throughout his life. His father was sent to um, the uh, well-known Greek asylum in Daphne um, for the mentally insane. And his sister, Lula, suffered from mental problems as well. She was institutionalized in 1936. And 1936 is an important date. We'll come back to that later. From his late teens to the mid-20s, um, Rizzo spent his time in and out of sanatoria, working when he was well, and he worked as a dancer and actor. With the outbreak of the Second World War, he joined the uh, Greek left resistance movement and fled to the mountains. In 1945, he headed the popular theater of uh, Macedonia, a theater that um, praised the actions of the partisans. Um, it was very Zdanovian. During the Greek civil wars that were to last approximately six years, or four years, depending on which approach he subscribed to, Ritsos was um, incarcerated as a prisoner in a number of concentration camps. And he continued to um, have this uh, flirtation with prison 
throughout the 50s. Um, in the early 50s, 1952, the international community of writers and intellectuals, including people like Aragon, Pablo Neruda, and Picasso, they protested to the Greek government and managed to secure his release in 1952. From 1953 to 1957, he was free to work full time, and this is where he produced most of his work. As some of you may know, Greece was the subject of a particular um, preferential treatment in the hands of history, having experienced wars, civil wars, and military di dictatorships several times uh, in the 20th century. In 1967, with the colonel's junta firmly ensconced and the ensuing attack on civil liberties, Ritsos was again arrested uh, several times, imprisoned and exiled on various islands where he spent much of his time in hospitals suffering tuberculosis and fighting it. Freed, he remained under house arrest until 17, 1974, uh, when we had the fall of the Junda. The last years of his life were spent between his home in Athens and his house on the island of Samos. He died in 1990. He was um, proposed for the Nobel Prize in Literature nine times, and he failed to win it. He did, however, win the Lenin Prize in, for peace, for which he was particularly happy about, and he said that this prize is more important for me than all the nobles. Marina, you can take over. Thank you. Here is my five minute take on, uh, on Ritzos. Um, I have even have a title, uh, which is Brief Thoughts on Bread, Freedom, and Love. In 1957, Ritos's Moonlight Sonata was published in French Letters, the magazine edited by Louis Aragon. In prefacing the work, Aragon wrote a brief introduction, including these words about Yanis Ritos, and you have these um, in your program. He's 49 years old, and in his literary text, we can now bear witness to his natural, natural grandeur. We must salute him as he rightfully deserves, and shouted from the rooftops. He is one of the greatest, one of the most remarkable poets of our time. As far as I'm concerned, at least, it has been a long time since I was last moved by the viol violent shock of genius. I'm fully aware that this word, genius, must never be uttered, let alone written. But I cannot help it. I will not retract it. About half a century later, the distinguished Palestinian poet, Mahmoud Darvish, described Ritzos in an interview as the greatest poet of the century. A hyperbole, for sure, and Darvish is aware of it, uh, much like Aragon is. Naive hyperboles, exaggerations that simply mean to say that Ritzos' poetry evokes extreme emotions that it evokes a pathos that can only be expressed in the extreme. Louis Aragon goes on to place Ritzos' poetry somewhere between the political and the personal. He is among the poets, he writes, who enjoy the right to laugh in the moonlight at night with a laughter that is boisterous and irrepressible, like life itself. Darwish writes something similar in his poem, Like a Mysterious Incident. Here he imagines a conversation with his friend, Yanis Ritsos. Uh, a couple of lines from Darwish. And I said, I learned a lot from you. I learned how to train myself to love life and how to row in the wide Mediterranean looking for the way and for home or for the duality of way and home. He didn't care for the compliment. He offered me coffee. I will risk a hyperbole myself in saying the following. Ritsos' poetry first taught me the meaning of home and the meaning of struggle. In my early teens, when the word injustice intoxicated me and many of my peers, he taught us the meaning of holding rocks in your hands. You either throw these, or if you're patient enough, you chisel, them, you chisel them until an image emerges, an image that resembles something that is undeni undeniably yours. He had dozens of such rocks in his house himself. Stubborn rocks that refuse to remain rocks. 